Hey Threadheads, welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Darren here. Today we're going to be tying a variation of John Kent's Rusty Nail. This is uh, a fly that he ties in a number of different ways and um, we'll go through a little bit of that as we tie it. One of the big differences is sometimes he'll use a white bead versus the copper bead and with that uh, if you use the white don't use the breathers and if you use the copper use the breathers. So is uh, pretty adamant about using the opalescent tinsel on this pattern and you can kind of see the difference with the uh, opalescent on the left and the pearl version of the mirage on the right. John ties this in a few different ways sometimes he'll uh, put the body on and then rib over top and other times he will add a ribbing material first something like a stretch tubing or uh, thicker wire and then put the tinsel in between. Don't forget to add a comment down below. I'll get your name entered into our next draw for some flies that we tie on here, materials, and some stickers. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. Let's get a fresh hook into the vise. We're going to be using a fire hole 315 and we're going to be using a size 10 here and we've got a 4 millimeter copper brass bead. Slip that into the vise. We're going to use some ADOT uh, wine UTC thread today. If uh, you wanted to skip a little bit of the wrapping you could go ahead and use a 140 for a fly this size. So we push the bead back, we're just going to tie in right behind the eye here, snip off the excess, and we're just going to add our first material. So we're going to be tying in some breathers for this version of the fly, and I'm going to be using some Stillwater Solutions Midge Gill, and we're just going to use one strand of this, and we'll just tie that on. We don't need a lot of length on that. I'd just like to have that a little bit longer than the eye of the hook just to make sure that you've got the breathers represented. And again, if you don't use a white bead on this, go ahead and use the uh, breathers. Uh, if you're going to use a white bead, you'll just omit this step. We'll just add a quick whip finish on there, trim that down, slip our bead over. So we'll restart our thread right in behind the bead and then we're going to start building the underbody and we want to just keep in mind when we're doing this try to keep our thread wraps fairly flat and we want to taper them towards the bead. We're going to use some small sized wine UTC wire for this. I like to just kind of tuck that in behind the bead and I like to try and keep all my wraps on the side of the hook shank that way you don't get any uh, twist as you're wrapping the body, especially on these really slim flies. If you pull that wire over to the back, it'll kind of give it a bit of an ugly spiral in the body. So we'll try and fill in some gaps here. We're just going to uh, keep try and keep our thread wraps fairly closely close together. We're going to use some opalescent uh, Mirage. You can kind of see the difference between the opal and the pearl there. The pearl's a little less mirrory, and the uh, opal's got a lot of reflective properties to it. And I'm using the large here. This is a, um, a size 10 if you're using like a uni. So we'll tie that in. I'm going to tie it in right along the top of the hook shank, down along the back. This is a little bit different than John Kent tied his. Um, he's got a few different ways that he's tied this pattern over the years. And this is, I guess, uh, my version of it. So we'll just tie that opal down to where we've got the wire stopped. And then we'll go ahead and we're going to work back and forth to kind of build a taper onto the fly. And again, I, if you want to make this process go a little faster you can switch up to a 140d thread or you can do what John did and actually 
put in an application of uh, stretch floss underneath and then cover it with the the wine thread either way is good all right so we got our taper built we're going to start to wrap the opal tinsel i'm just going to try and get touching turns you don't really want to overlap these too much you want that uh, wine color to be able to show underneath from underneath so we'll just go ahead we'll get up to right in behind the bead and then we're going to take some thread wraps and we're just going to tight tightly wrap that down right in behind the bead as much as possible we want to kind of keep the uh, collar on this fly down to a minimum and just like to go back and forth to make sure that that material is locked in place just helps you create a more durable fly and because I did the tinsel body I'm going to reverse my direction of wrapping on the wire so the goal here is to get somewhere between six and eight segments on the finished fly just to kind of mimic the natural chronomids and uh, just takes a little bit of practice of course if you get too many or too few you can always unwrap and give it another try so again we'll wrap our th our wire off and just make sure that you go in behind the wire and in front of it to make sure it's really locked down pull that tight give it a couple twists to pop it off and then we can whip finish our fly from here and the only thing we've got left to do is add a little bit of uh, either head cement or in this case we're going to use some bone dry to uh, put a top coating on this and really make this fly quite durable we've got some solar as bone dry we're just going to brush that on make sure that we get a full coating on all the thread wraps and all of the uh, body the tinsel the wire and go over everything and really kind of helps accentuate that shine when it gets wet too so the last step on this fly is just to give that a zap with your uv torch uv light and uh, just give it a few seconds to cure and i find the bone drive cures fairly quickly under 10 seconds usually and We'll just go ahead and we'll trim up those fibers on the front just a little bit and there you go there's the rusty nail variation if uh, you're interested I can tie another variation of this using the white bead let me know in the comments if you're interested in that and we'll see you in the next one hey fly tires thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos if you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel, and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.